Welcome to the Moonflower Path Podcast. This space is for the highly sensitive, the creatives, the earth loving, the caregivers, the weirdos, the feelers, the change makers, and dreamers of the world. Here, we are all about guiding you to trust your body intuition so you can find home and shift culture. Through the exploration of somatic practice, self-care, and seasonal ritual, my hope is that you will be inspired to be in harmony with yourself and in a dance with the earth. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. Hello, gentle listener, and welcome back to the podcast. I am Carolyn, your host, your guide, the founder of the Moonflower Path. Welcome back to another edition of Seasonal Rituals. (laughs) Before we jump in, this is your last gentle invitation to be a founding member of the Moonflower Path community space. As of tonight, that is April 26th, the day that this episode comes out, At 4 p.m. EST, the sale ends on the discounted founding member pricing for the Moonflower Path community space. I mentioned in last week's episodes the benefits of being a founding member, but in short, it's two things. One, this is only the beginning. And as the value of the space increases through expanding the live stream schedule, increasing the self-care video library, and adding more and new components, your investment never increases. So you're locking in a wicked price from day one. You also have the availability to pause your membership with no penalty, as well as upgrade and downgrade between the tiers as your financial situation shifts and ebbs and flows without any penalties. So you have access to the founding member pricing forever, no matter how kind of how much you want to jump around, how many changes you want to make, but the sale ends tonight. Number two, you get to shape the space. I am taking all conversations and requests from current members in deep consideration when I'm thinking of any changes and improvements being made to the community space. So your input will quite literally help guide the different directions that we go in, in turn ensuring that you are optimally supported by your community. So if you're interested in being a part of a cozy community of feelers who are walking through their own self-care journey with care, softness, intuition, and intention, then we would be honored to welcome you in. Just visit our website to join. The link is in the show notes. All right, on to today's episode. Welcome to Seasonal Rituals, celebrating Beltane, the 2023 edition. As a reminder, in Seasonal Ritual episodes, I share the energies you might begin to notice inside and around you during this seasonal transition, how to be in flow with them, my intuitive take on the lessons being learned at this time, a little seasonal forecast, and we'll end with a few somatic rituals you could move through to create your own Beltane celebration. So without further ado, let's dance and flow with the energy of Beltane. So as a reminder, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about why we do this. Why do we mark the turning of the wheel of the year why do we celebrate and drop an anchor in the seasonal transitions why do we do this it's not to add more things to your plate it's not to bring in another thing that's going to make you feel shameful because you're not doing it like the closet that I have of crafting material that doesn't get played with as often as I would like, or the 30-day yoga challenge that you sign up for and 
after day three, you drop off. This is really about pushing against hustle culture and toxic perfectionism and productivity and doing more just for the sake of doing more. And it's about the opposite of that. It's about slowing down. It's about coming back to what we want, what we need, what is true for us in that moment. It's about leaning into the lessons that the natural world has to offer and teach us. It's about connecting with the natural world, with the earth, in order to be able to learn more about yourself and vice versa. It's about right tuning into yourself in order to be able to learn more about the natural world and the connection that is found between you and mama earth and all of it so i'd really encourage you to come back to your why as you listen to this episode so that um this episode doesn't leave you feeling like you just have more things to do and it leaves you feeling encouraged to take what feels good, take what lights you up and to leave the rest. And that at the end of the day, this is your own practice. This is your own path. This is your own self-care journey. And that you can take these words and you can let them shift and morph into finding your own flavor. It's kind of like, you know how they say that perfume smells different on each person? I, I want this to be your own version of the perfume that you put on your body. This is, of course, my take. This is, of course, my intuitive take as well as um, the research that I've put in into the, the histories and the symbols and the energies of Beltane as well as my take on the seasonal rituals that you might move through. But let it become your own scented perfume. So first we start off with talking about the energies that you might notice around as well as inside of you during this seasonal time. So Beltane, which technically uh, on this year is going to happen on May 1st, which is next Monday if you're listening to this episode live. Beltane is the, let's see, let me look at my Wheel of the Year post it on my wall one two three four it's the fourth seasonal celebration on the wheel of the year depending on (laughs) depending on how you how you look at it as i mentioned in last seasonal rituals episode in this space i consider yule the beginning and so beltane is the next turn after the spring equinox Spring equinox being the seasonal celebration that ushered in spring. And Beltane is the mid-spring celebration before we move on to the to the peak. Right? So if you were to look at the, the wheel of the year, you might either have Yule at the top or at the bottom, but let's consider it at the bottom, um, synonymous with the new moon. And the wheel moves clockwise, and so you move towards the left, up towards the top of the wheel, the top being the full moon, the top being the summer solstice. So Beltane is the seasonal celebration that ushers in the final, let's say, quote, push before the peak, the summer solstice being like the peak, the top, the apex of the growth that's being found, of the cycle that's being found in this year or in your life. So Of course, you may not coincide directly with the energies that I I present to you, or you may intentionally build your life such that if you feel the energies being similar to how you're feeling, because ultimately what we are going for here is to be in flow with the natural world, but also to be in flow with how you're feeling, then you might find, okay, These are the goals, these are the desires, the intentions that I have and that I had for myself for this year. And if I'm like really here for it, I'm really here for seasonal living because I want to be, not because I'm forcing that on myself, then this would be the time that it's like, okay, we are 
we are really breathing that fresh air into these desires before we come to the summer solstice, which is really like the, the beginning of this like coasting energy. If you were to imagine a bird taking flight, the summer solstice is when the bird kind of like stops flapping its wings and it's at the height of where it's gonna rise up to in the sky and there's this energy of like okay now I'm here now I'm in it now I'm going to kind of stop flapping my wings and just adjust course correct and enjoy myself and play with the energies so Beltane is ushering in the energy before that moment so in, in many pagan traditions and Gaelic communities and Druid traditions, this would have been actually the time that ushers in the summer season where some communities celebrate only two seasons, only winter and only summer. And so Beltane would have been like the fire festival that welcomes in and shifts us into summer. So very traditionally, Beltane is associated with fire energy. So there's history of building really big bonfires at this time. And like, you know, the like quintessential dance around the bonfire, dance until dawn, um, party, have fun, celebrate. There's like a really big boisterous energy to Beltane. There's also some some history of folks actually like leaping over fires, really inviting in this, this sense of courage, of, of hope, of trust, of taking the leap. So that might be an energy that you play around with that you might notice inside yourself, which can, for as sensitive souls, it can be this like, ooh, oh my goodness, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it can be it can be an overwhelming feeling it can be a, a pressuring feeling but know that of course like you get to do this at your own pace you get to do this your own way so ground as much as you can and this brings me into kind of an interesting energy so in Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic tradition and Ayurveda is the the sister the sister medicine to yoga so if yoga being the philosophy yoga being the the mind yoga being the the tradition that we learn to to unite the mind body and heart through through practice through study through meditation ayurvedic tradition ayurveda medicine is the accompaniment to that in terms of how do you nourish your body so in Ayurveda, there are, there are three doshas, pitta, kapha, and vata. And the spring season is actually kapha season, which is earth, which is grounding, which is rooting, which I think is really nice. It was like a, when, I was, when I was doing my research and I was taking a look, I was like, oh, that's like a really welcoming energy to the traditional fire energy that is associated with Beltane. So when I say, yes, take the leap, do the things, jump over the fire, build the bonfires, do the things, right? Maybe that's like literally, but it might also be symbolically. There's this really welcoming grounding energy that we find ourselves in kapha season. And kapha being a slow, a rooting down. So how can you play with both of those energies in order to be able to really support yourself? Another big theme is sensuality. Now, a lot of folks might get sexuality and sensuality confused. I definitely used to. But sensuality is simply the condition of being pleasing or fulfilling to the senses. And if there is a time where there is a pleasurable amount of that, it's during the height of spring. There's a very distinct difference between the spring equinox and Beltane, right? The spring equinox, there are no leaves on the trees <laughs> for the most part. And there aren't really a whole lot of signs of springs. It's, be, it's beginning, absolutely, but 
Beltane is really the height of spring, depending on where you find yourself. So there is really this great amount of sensual pleasure to be found during this this time. But I'm also not afraid to talk about sexuality here either, because to connect with your sense of pleasure and desire with your body can be a magical way to get more comfortable with those sensations in every aspect of your life, to get used to receiving and wanting, which is something, especially as folks who walk through the world as women, has been something we've been told to be shameful of. Or as queer folk, that adds a whole new layer, right? Because we're not even taught how or what to do when it comes to our sexuality. So maybe this could be a time where you explore what your relationship with sensuality and sexuality is. Not for anybody else's sake, but for your own. So how could you play around with being present to your senses? feeling the texture of even just like rubbing your fingertips on the palm of your hand. What does that feel like? Feeling your fingertips graze around the spots that feel tight or that are holding, bracing during this time, right? Spots like your temples, a spot in between your eyebrows, the sides of your neck, your upper back, your low back, even the soles of your feet. This was actually something that was really infused into the Beltane YouTube yoga practice that I shared that you can now jump into and enjoy where I offered a few opportunities to offer yourself self-massage. I also kept the window open during that practice so that you could enjoy the sounds of the birds outside my window. So how could you take time to leave the windows open and pause? I was talking with my wife the other day about how sometimes when I am sitting outside and I'm like laying on the hammock or I'm sitting on the porch and I intentionally was like, okay, I'm not going to bring my phone outside and I'm just going to like have nothing with me, like no no book, no like knitting, nothing. I'm just going to sit outside because I know it's good for me to just like not be distracted and to be present. But very quickly, I find myself getting bored, getting distracted, getting in my mind. And I've turned it into a practice of closing my eyes, opening up my ears, (laughs) whatever that might actually look like, and getting curious about, can I turn this into a game of how many sounds do I notice around me? And what very quickly happens is that you notice that there is never a moment of silence. Very rarely is there a moment of silence. And I, I live in the woods. (laughs) I live in the woods where there are no people around me. I mean, other than when there's summer camp happening and then there's children screaming constantly, but For the most part, it's pretty quiet around where I live. So I can only imagine what this practice would look like for folks who live in the city or for folks who live in the suburbs or for folks who just have neighbors and there's people around. There is so much to to relish in in the sounds where sound can become overwhelming. Yes, it absolutely can when we talk about being highly sensitive or when we talk about being neurodivergent, but It can also become a practice in and of itself of being present, of actually beginning to identify sounds. Oh, there's somebody mowing the lawn. Oh, that's a robin, I think. (laughs) I think that's a cardinal. There's a car driving by. There's folks talking, dogs barking, plane flying in the sky. And it doesn't have to become anything more than that. And it can just be a practice of identifying and then moving on, which in that moment becomes a beautiful practice in presence. In that moment becomes a beautiful practice in opening up to senses and opening up to sensuality and noticing what sounds feel good in your body and what sounds don't feel good in your body. But it also becomes a practice in neutrality to sound, which can be really helpful when you might find yourself overwhelmed by sound and shifting your perspective and oh, okay, 
I can actually be neutral to sound and just identify them and then move on. So this is kind of an interesting take on sensuality. Another, another energy, another symbol, another theme, another lesson is creativity. I feel like this really does go without saying. <laughs> I mean, creativity is something that you can explore always in every state, no matter what, no matter what season. It ebbs and flows and sometimes has a mind of its own. However, for a lot of folks, this can be seen as a really creative time just by the sheer rising in energy outside as well as inside of ourselves because you are of nature. So with the rising energy outside, you might notice a rise of energy inside your body. This happens kind of inherently just inside of your body, but it also happens where we're spending more time outside because the weather is beautiful. We're getting more <laughs> vitamin D from the sun, which helps with energy. There is also a rise of serotonin because we are doing more things that are pleasurable, which then helps with increasing our energy. So there is just a rising of energy being found inside of you. And so you might notice, oh, I have the capacity to be able to dedicate myself to creative practices, to creative endeavors. So that might look like actually like your creative hobbies, or it might look like I have the about ability to actually problem solve. I have the ability to find creative solutions to the goals that I am trying to walk towards at this time. The abundance of colors, smells, and sounds to be found around you might help spark and inspire your creative practices at this time. So that's an invitation. And then lastly, fertility is a huge energy found at this time. You can't really talk about creativity and sensuality with talking about fertility, about the process of birthing or bringing something to life. Now, as someone who is still on the fence about whether I want to bring children into the world or not, let me say firsthand that birthing doesn't only refer to bringing human children into the world. As someone who has just moved through probably one of my biggest birthing experience I've ever moved through in the form of launching the Moonflower Path community space, bringing a creative endeavor into the world is no friggin' joke. It is terrifying, it is exhausting, and messy. It's also beautiful, it is fulfilling, it is all those beautiful things, but I don't want to only focus on the light, I also want to focus on the stuff that feels really uncomfortable. And it is terrifying, it is exhausting, it is messy, and it's filled with uncomfortable stuff. It was so helpful for me to walk in the woods around my house these past few weeks and look at all the perfect imperfection found in the birthing process of the plants and animals around me to let myself melt into the process instead of getting lost in the outcome. There are some plants that started popping up around my house that quickly had to close up during a colder week. We had this like really weird, super hot week and then the next week was actually quite cold. The spring peepers were here. They were loud. They were here. And then there wasn't a peep from them for many cold nights. And it was a reminder that growth and bringing things to life is super non-linear. And you need to take it literally one day at a time. And sometimes when somebody tells you, tells you like, just be in the process, um, be with it. It's messy. Be here for the uncomfortable. Sometimes it's helpful and sometimes it's not because you're like, frig, this is annoying. <laughs> so if that's the case as you're listening here because you're in the thick of doing some big creative project right now, then like, all good, you can just fast forward through this because there were some moments where some of my friends that were like, it's okay, it's messy, you can do this. And I was like, I don't want to hear this right now. I just want to bitch and complain about it. That's okay. But if it would be a beneficial reminder to you as you explore fertility, creativity in your own way to be reminded that it's going to be messy, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to be hard, it's going to be exhausting, it's going to be terrifying, and let it be okay. You are here because you value, you prioritize self-care, 
So this is the time to lean onto your self-care supports. And I've already talked about a few supports that you can use like that sensual practice and opening up to sounds. That is a self-care resource. And some of the self-care rituals I'll, I'll talk about at the end will be supportive at this time. So lean on your self-care supports at this time. Another natural world lesson that I noticed for myself was there was a super windy day recently and I noticed the first flowers that popped up in the forest had started growing during the warm week and then on this cold windy day they were all closed up and bracing themselves through the wind. I sat beside this one single liverwort flower, ugly name, but they're actually really pretty. <laughs> I sat beside one of these flowers for a while. They're tiny, like just a few inches off the ground, just like maybe an inch in diameter when they're open and they're this like really pale lilac color, but they was closed and it was really blowing in the wind. And I sat beside this flower for a little while, not like for a long time doing some like deep meditation. I just like sat for like a few minutes as my dog Nala was like chewing on a stick. And I kind of felt like we were just being together in our blowiness. As I was moving through this creative process of launching the community space and feeling like, oh man, okay, yes, I'm feeling pretty rooted, but things feel very windy right now. And we just sat there together, me and this little flower, breathing through it, swaying through it, being through it. And it felt like such a nourishing way to connect with the energies around me as I was moving through a similar season as this flower was. So this brings me into the how to be in flow and my intuitive take on this time. So the invitation is similar. The ways to be in flow these days might look like being in relationship with the natural around you and the ways that are specific to the world around you. Can you tune into the rhythm of growth you're noticing around you in the natural world? How some trees and some plants wake up a bit faster than others and some we won't see until the peak of summer. What plants and animals around you today this week, right here and now, have something to teach you that you can connect with, that you can learn more about. How can you help each other out these days, you and the animals and the plants? What can you learn from each other? After all, to be a moonflower is to be in a dance with the earth. So dance with her lovely. Are there cherry blossoms that are blossoming? What can they teach you? What about the very first dandelions that you notice around you? What can they teach you about resilience, about popping up first? What about just the sprouts that you're seeing at the very base of the garden beds, at the very tips of the trees? What do they have to teach you? And this brings me into sharing my own intuitive take on this seasonal transition. Last year, when I put together this Beltane Seasonal Rituals resource, spring was here. It was like full leaves on the trees and it was like super duper springy, quintessential springy last year at this time, which absolutely guided the direction of my resources. It was like super up and peppy and you like got the vibes in the way that I was writing the letters and the, the rituals that I was choosing because that's what was happening around me in the natural world. So this is such a lesson in how no matter how subjective one should be, quote, should be as a teacher, inevitably my own experience will bleed into my teachings. And I feel like instead of ignoring that and trying to be more objective, I want to remember that part of the reason that you are in this community, that you're listening to this podcast, is in part because of the magic that I personally bring to this space. So I wanted to jump off of that and what I was talking about earlier about my little sitting sesh with the spring flower into my intuitive take on this seasonal transition being Beltane. This spring around where I live 
in this part of Ottawa, Ontario, also known as the unceded territory of the Algonquin people. It's been a little weird. Spring has been weird. It's been a little hectic seasonally. We literally had an ice storm two weeks ago here. So as much as this is a time of beauty and blah, 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 there are still no leaves on the trees around my house. And you know what this has been a fun experience in? Being right here, right now. Even though there is still so much brown, there is still awe, wonder, and beauty to be found. And it's almost like it's become a game, a necessary game. Because I know joke broke a bit the day after the ice storm. Walking through the forest, it literally sounded like the trees were crying. Branches and fallen trees littering the ground. An ice storm in April. It's not right. I don't need to tell you that sporadic weather stuff is a result of climate change. You know that. So as I walked through the forest that day, I felt its grief. I felt the sadness. I felt the heaviness. Which could have left me feeling pretty damn hopeless. Yet, these past few days, as I turn to find the beauty into a game, it's like it's almost fueling me. Instead of feeling only grief and only paralysis about it all, to see the beauty in the bark of the fallen trees, the resilience of the tiny little flowers, the slow and long process of the osprey building her nest one large branch at a time, I use the awe I feel in the simple beauty to help fuel me in my life to do the things, walk towards my desires, as well as help fuel my capacity to do what I can to do right by this earth. So this Beltane, what would finding your own relationship with the fiery, creative, and fertile energy of this season look like for you? The fire can be, yes, this beautiful, like, hopeful, let's do it, let's take those leaps, let's do the things. It can also be seen as a way to help stoke the fire of hope, of faith, of trust amidst moments of grief, heaviness, sadness, fear, and doubt. So find your own relationship. Cultivate your own relationship with the fire and the earth and the creativity and the fertility and the sensuality that Beltane has to teach us. Oof. Okay. <laughs> so got a little serious, but let's bring it back up here. <laughs> we are here for the multitudes of the experience of being a human. So two more segments, two more explorations to move through in this episode. So I always love the opportunity to offer you a seasonal forecast. I mean, come on, the space is called the Moonflower Path. So how about we connect with the moon and how she will be supporting us during these next six weeks before the summer solstice. So we currently, as you are listening to this, find ourselves in the grounding Taurus season, which is an earth sign, which kind of coincides with what I mentioned earlier about this Ayurvedic Kapha season, which is such a welcome to the fiery and windy energy of creative spring. The first full moon of this period is on May 5th, moving through a lunar eclipse. So I am not an astrologer, and if you're looking to actually learn more from a very, very respected astrologer, I would encourage you to go check out Renee Sills's community and business, Embodied Astrology. I'll leave that uh, 
a link in the show notes. But in like synopsis, eclipses are said to be portals. So eclipses always come in pairs. They start off in, during the new moon as we typically move through a solar eclipse. And then eclipse season ends on the following full moon where we typically move through a lunar eclipse. And that period of time, which is about two weeks, is said to be a time where very drastic change can happen if you find yourself really open to it. So you're in the thick of it, my friend. So if you're feeling the change, ride the wave, you got this. The next new moon will grace us with her presence on May 19th in the sign of Taurus, moving in the direction of Gemini kicking off Gemini season, which is a communicative and flowy air sign. This new moon ushers in the only full lunar cycle happening in between Beltane and Litha, the summer solstice. So it's really like the full experience of embodying full growth and creation that you wish to explore in this quote, final push before the peak of the wheel of the year on June 21st, summer solstice. So within this full lunar cycle that you'll be moving through between Beltane and Litha through Gemini season, you'll have the opportunity to track and celebrate your growth on the full moon on June 4th in the sign of Sagittarius, a fire sign. So it's like talk about the things, share about your dreams, and really breathe some fresh air into all of the things type of vibes. Then right before Litha, the new moon in the sign of Gemini moving to Cancer ushers in Cancer season, a water sign, bringing in some refreshing healing vibes to welcome in the new summer season a few days later on June 21st. All right, we enter into the moment we have all been waiting for, the somatic seasonal rituals. I've got a few for you today. So firstly, May bushes or also are referred to as May wishing trees or have also been referred to as fairy trees. So we are, for the most part, quite familiar with the practice of decorating trees. Am I right? If we think about one quintessential celebration that we decorate trees. So this is a ritual that you might be very familiar with. And the idea behind the May bush is to find a bush outside of your house, so actually outside if you have a bush that you would like to decorate. And the idea is simple. How could you decorate this tree such that you are putting your wishes out into the world, your hopes, your dreams, so that the energy of Beltane can really wrap around this area, wrap around this bush, and hopefully help support you in bringing these wishes to fruition. It can look however you want. Hopefully you are using materials and things that are somewhat okay for the environment so we're not doing any damage. So get really creative with it. It could be anything. You could cover this tree with anything that might represent what your wishes, what your hopes, what your dreams are around this time. You can make it a game. Maybe you have kids and you'd like to do this with them. So a May bush would be a really fun ritual to explore during this time. I mean, I can't have this list of somatic rituals without including a bonfire. Honestly, I find that at this point, when I look back at the list of seasonal rituals that I've shared over the course of the past two plus years, bonfires and campfires are a really common occurrence on these lists because there's just like something to them, right? This idea of building a fire and you're gathering with others. So there's this like really communal energy to them. You can like throw stuff in the fire, which is like maybe an energy of letting things go or bringing, bringing things to fruition. So maybe this time would be a time that you could create a ritual around having a bonfire. If you live in the city, hopefully you have some sort of campfire thing that you can actually light in the city and if not well i would strongly encourage you to light a few candles on may 1st and let that be a simple and quiet ritual for yourself next is the invitation to create a ritual around starting a new creative project 
And I would encourage you to let this be either one that might be a bit challenging, right? Because you've got the energy. If you have it, use it. Two, that would be a project that is just for you if it's been a while since you've moved through a creative project that is just for you. Or three, on the flip side, that will be a project in creating something for a loved one. So creating a ritual around this, setting aside some time, moving through your crafting closet if you've got one, and moving towards the yarn or the paper or the fabric or the paint colors that are really calling your name, pulling them out, lighting some candles, putting some music on, putting on the right clothes that make you feel like your beautiful creative self, and doing something that really lets your creative self play. And the reason that I mentioned maybe this is an opportunity to create something either for yourself as an act of self-love or creating something for a loved one as a practice in love is because belting is a time of love, right? I mentioned it's a sexy, it's a sensual time, it's a pleasurable time. So this could become a practice in moving on to my next somatic ritual, a practice in sharing the love of doing something for someone that you care for in your life. The fourth somatic ritual would be share the love. However you have the capacity to, whatever that might look like for you. And number five. As I mentioned earlier in this episode, there is a free YouTube yoga practice on the Moonflower Path YouTube channel called Beltane, Nurture Your Inner Earth Goddess. And in this practice, we move through a kind of, kind of flowy practice. It's not a very strong, strong, powerful practice, but a flowy practice where you are guided through some different variations of goddess pose. And then we end on the floor with a little bit of yin yoga and some self-massage. This is a 45-minute practice. It is soulful, it is flowy, it is nurturing, and it is really an opportunity for you to tune into your inner earth goddess as you celebrate Beltane. So you can find that on the Moonflower Path YouTube channel. And of course, I cannot talk about seasonal rituals without a gentle invitation to join us in the fireside tier, which is all about somatic ritual. It is all about really sourcing yourself through connecting with the earth, through connecting with your fellow community of moonflowers. And so at the end of the month of May, our seasonal ritual for celebrating Beltane is we're going to come together and create a ritual around making flower crowns. So if that is something that you would be really interested in doing and you want to connect with us and you want to build your own flower crown, either to put on your head and wear around for one day, maybe you're going to a music festival or you are going for a picnic and you feel like being especially (laughs) fairy-like, or it could be a really beautiful thing to actually place on your altar or to hang on the wall around this time. And you could let it dry out. And then I've got a few crafts and uh, creative practices that you can use for the dried flowers that I'm gonna bring to you in June. So if you're interested in joining us in the flower making ritual, now is the time because as a reminder at the beginning of the episode I mentioned, today is the last day to gain access to the founding member pricing for the Moonflower Path community space. All right, my lovely, I hope that today's seasonal rituals episode on how to celebrate Beltane has been a nourishing one, an inspiring one, a hopeful one. Hopefully I didn't bring you down too much when I was talking about climate change and all the things, but it's important. We're here for nuanced conversations, right? We're here for all the conversations. We're here for the light as well as the dark of the experience of being a human on this earth. Happy Beltane. I hope that you can carve out some time for yourself this coming week and remember to bring it back to your why. It can be as expansive as a full day Beltane ritual or as simple and intimate as a deep breath, opening the window and taking in the sounds of the birds. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful rest of your week.
and we will chat again next week. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Moonflower Path Podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn, and ways that you can find more support from me and this cozy community are all found in the show notes. Please consider rating, reviewing, and sharing this podcast with a friend. Those are the best ways to show your support for this free and accessible resource. Wishing you a gentle rest of your day, and I look forward to connecting again with you very soon.